Hello, good morning to all of you. So I hope all of you are doing well. So in today's class, we are going to discuss about domain analysis. Now, domain analysis is an important uh, activity that is to be performed in order to promote software reuse, wherein what we try to do is we try to identify the reusable components into the problem domain. Now, at uh, in situations where uh, we do not have adequate knowledge about the domain of interest then mapping the uh, the mapping the reusable components to the uh, the problem domain may be a uh, uh, may be a difficult task so which implies that uh, uh, in order to establish uh, a proper domain analysis uh, mechanism what we need to have is we need to have a very deep and a comprehensive knowledge about the domain of interest and we should be capable of identifying the patterns of similarity between the between the reusable components and the components that are already there in the domain of interest or the problem domain. So we can say that domain analysis basically tries to identify uh, the objects, uh, the the operations, and the relationship that binds them together. So this is this is the the importance of domain analysis. Now. Let us try to understand it with the help of an example, right? So if you consider uh, any form of reservation systems, may it be really reservation system or airline reservation system or train reservation system. And now the, the nature of the operations that are being performed by the, the customer using these reservation systems are almost similar. So if you have, uh, if you have, uh, if you have an experience of building a one kind of reservation system, then what we can do is we can generalize the, the concept Concepts that are there associated with that particular system in building another system in, in in various forms. What we can do is we can reuse knowledge, we can reuse components, right? So in order to ensure that, in order to ensure that we are capable of uh, enforcing on uh, reuse of the various components, uh, we have a sound knowledge about the uh, the very uh, various aspects of interest put in that particular uh, domain of uh, domain of interest. So, for example, if you consider uh, a a software system like operating system, so if you have an experience about uh, what may be the possible types of components that may be there in an operating system, then potentially what we can do is we can generalize that particular knowledge, or we can reuse the existing component as well as in creating a, a new operating system so that is the way how uh, domain um, yeah, analysis basically works so uh, now domain analysis uh Yes, definitely it's a very difficult uh, problem or it's difficult task. It is uh, much more difficult compared to that of structured analysis because here what we need to know is we need to we need to know what is the domain uh, we need to define what is the domain of interest we need to map the reusable components to the problem domain we need to make the uh, domain ripe or we need to mature the domain and then what we can do is we can potentially uh, uh, reuse the components that are belonging to that particular domain in order to create a new system so definitely it's a very very complex activity but uh, if you are capable of uh, creating a domain of components or uh, a particular domain of interest, then it may be very easy for us to uh, devise a mechanism for expressing the problems that may be related to that particular domain, right? So what we can have is we can have domain-specific language for expressing the uh, the various uh, systems belonging to that particular domain. Likewise, what we can have is we can have a problem-oriented language or, or a mechanism for generating applications belonging to that particular domain. So uh, just see, it depends upon the way how you uh, you you evolve your domain uh, uh, the necessary, uh, the uh, the uh, the necessary, uh, the or the associated activities can be performed with uh, relative ease. Now, uh, as I've already uh, specified earlier, so domain analysis basically aims at identifying reusable components of the problem domain. So here, the the, the process of constructing reusable components of the problem domain is called as uh, domain engineering. So over 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 its lifetime, a domain may uh, attain different stages of evolution. So let us try to identify the various stages of evolution. So we have stage one, uh, we have stage two, we have stage three, and we have stage four. So in stage stage one, uh, uh, what we have is we have our domain that is completely immature. Uh, we don't have any notations. We don't have any standards. We don't have any component for reuse. We don't have knowledge for reuse. So based on the experience, uh, the developer tends to provide solution to the problem and handle the, the associated errors. And now in stage Stage two, 
So what we have is we have a similar knowledge being used for uh, building similar system or a similar problem are solved in similar way so here what we are trying to do is we are trying to enforce on reuse of knowledge and in stage three we have a domain ripe for reuse so domain so what we are doing is we are placing reusable components into the domain so the domain is ripe for reuse so what we have is we have a set of concepts that are stabilized uh, we have standard solutions for standard problems and here what we are reusing is we are reusing knowledge as well as we are reusing the components now and in stage four right what we have done is we have completely explored the domain right the domain is completely ripe so now what we can do is we can uh, develop software application using the domain specific language where we try to use the application generators for generating the program instead of uh, instead of gen depending on uh, th uh, the the third, second or the third generation language here what we do is we depend on fourth generation uh, languages for for generating application right so you see these are the various stages of evolution so as the as the domain matures uh, uh, with the uh, with the lapse of time so uh, what we have is we have a very uh, very uh, standard we uh, we may evolve with a very standard way of generating software application now uh, there are various steps in, in steps involved in domain engineering so we have classification we have searching we have browsing we have repository maintenance and then we have application generation right so classification basically refers to a description of the components uh, using natural language at different levels of abstraction so uh, a component may be discussed uh, that may be described at a very high label a component may be described at very low level of abstraction right so both form of representation of the components should be there so there should be a very high level or very uh, very abstract form of representation of the component as well as there has to be a detailed uh, representation of the component now searching so there has to be a mechanism because the uh, just see there might be several components that may be uh, uh, that can be that may be potentially reused so finding out the right component or locating the right component for reuse is what searching is capable of enabling so searching is a process purely dedicated for uh, uh, purely dedicated for determining the uh, the uh, determining uh, uh, or establishing a mechanism for determining uh, the the reusable modules that may be required for a software system now browsing so whenever you are searching for a uh, searching for a for a related concept right so what we are found, highlighted with this we are highlighted with a set of links so it uses links for uh, items found during approximate search uh, to look for related items so uh, that is what browsing is all about so looking for the appropriate uh, reusable component out of the list of the links that are highlighted by the the search operation and then we have repository maintenance so this we have already learned about in the past that we have uh, component induction the removal of component uh, or removal of obsolete components so induction of the uh, the new system or the evolved system or removal of the the old system or the obsolete system so that's what is done uh, during repository maintenance and application generation so here, what we tend to do is we tend to gen, uh, translate the specification into into a into an application program using uh, the application generators or the fourth generation language. So these are the steps that are there in, in, involved in uh, domain in, uh, engineering in brief. So we have uh, classification, we have uh, searching, we have browsing, we have repository maintenance, and we have application generation. So in today's class, what we have learned about is we have learned about uh, what is domain analysis what is the importance of domain analysis right uh, what is the need for uh, establishing a, a very a concrete knowledge about the the domain of interest what does domain analysis basically identify then we try to understand it with the help of an example right and then we moved on to uh, what is the domain engineering and then uh, we moved on to uh, what are the uh, the various stages of evolution that a domain may be right uh, during its lifetime so we identified there are four stages which are uh, which are capable of identifying uh, different states of the domain so in stage number one uh, 
uh, we do not have reusable component we don't have notations we don't have standards uh, we don't have knowledge so what we do is based relying on our experience we develop this software system and uh, uh, handle associate problems in stage number two uh, similar problems are uh, solved in similar manner so what we have is we have knowledge for reuse in stage number three the domain is ripe as we place reusable components to the domain okay and uh, and then here what we are doing is we are reusing the knowledge as well as we are reusing the components so standard solutions are used for standard problem now stage number four uh, domain is fully explored right uh, domain is completely ripe so here what we do is we use uh, our automated uh, support for building up software applications so we rely on fourth generation languages and then we discussed in brief the steps that are involved in domain engineering so where we learned about what is classification in brief uh, what is um, searching what is browsing what is uh, app, uh, repository maintenance and application generation so thank you very much this particular uh, chapter ends here so in the next class uh, we'll be uh, we'll be discussing some of the the important questions that may be uh, placed uh, in case of software engineering so thank you very much